this company, awesome company, may be 15 years old, but my love for trees started way, 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 way before then. I'd like to share a story with you of a little girl who was six years old, standing at the end of a very long driveway, at the end of the road, bawling her eyes out. And when my mother discovered me there, she came running out and wanted to know what the problem was. And just as she asked that question, um, a logging truck drove by. And I was like, they're killing all the trees. And she said, no, they're not, honey. Trees aren't alive. And I was like, yes, they are. And then I cried even harder because she didn't believe me. And it's sort of like, you know, it's amazing that even as a child then, I knew something was wrong. Now I'm going to go forward a little bit more. Now I'm a, I'm a grown woman. I have two little boys of my own. And I'm at a park with, the, with my kids. And we're sitting on a blanket. And we're eating Kentucky Fried Chicken on a single mom's salary. That was quite a treat. And uh, my, my oldest boy, Curtis, he got up. And he said, Mom, can I go talk to the trees? I was like, absolutely. And he ran across you know, the park, and he stood there for the longest time, staring at this, um, this tree. And then he hugged the tree, and then he came running back to me. And he sat down and he said, Mom, do people know that trees are alive? And I went, no, honey, not everybody pays attention. He goes, well, they should. He said, because if they pay attention, they'll talk to you. OK, this part I didn't know. <laughs> So I said, really, really? So the tree talked to you today, did it? And he said, yep. Yeah. I said, well, what did the tree say? And he got so, he's like, OK. He goes, here's what the tree said. God's gift to you is who you are. Your gift to God is who you become. I'm like, where's a pen? <laughs> And it's just like, you know what's amazing is that um, I didn't know it then, but that little girl was going to grow up and become the tree lady. Yes, I am a bona fide tree-hugging entrepreneur, and I am the tree lady. You know, it's interesting. I get to stand here in front of you today sharing my passion and my um, desire and love for all kinds of trees. But the tree that I absolutely love the most is the Empress Splendor tree. Now, when I was first introduced to the Empress Splendor tree, I had what Oprah would probably call an aha moment. And yes, I have to honestly say, I fell madly in love with a tree. The Empress Splendor tree is the fastest growing hardwood tree in the world. It captures 11 times more carbon than any other tree. It um, regenerates from the stump after you cut it down. Everybody says that leaves are the lungs of our planet. Well, one leaf is like the size of the tables that we um, had upstairs. So I tell everybody this tree's got a great set of lungs on it. <laughs> When you chop this tree down, when it regenerates this stump and it's used for a fabulous lumber, it helps reduce the impact that we have on, all, on old growth forests. You know, seriously, I could actually talk all day long about this tree. So anybody that would like to know more information about it, like I, I, I could go on and on and on. And <laughs> sometimes I don't know if I'm... If I found the tree or the tree found me, but we've been together for over 20 years now. And like any relationship, we've had our ups and downs. And one of the things that I can honestly say here, you can find your passion. You can find what really lights you up and, inspire, and inspires you, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. I want you to picture this. I've just launched world tree, I've decided I'm going to do this, and then 9-11 happens. And you need to know raising capital in that kind of environment was really, really difficult. 
so I had signed up for this um, place where you could go showcase your, your business. It was called IBI Global. And so I went there and I was ready. And if you, if you uh, were able to showcase your, um, your product, and if you did a really good job and you were, had everything that you possibly needed, you could get chosen to actually do a capital presentation in front of 300 angel investors. So not only was I chosen, I won. You need to know, so cool. I was brought up on stage and I was presented a check for $3 million. Now all of my dreams were gonna come true. And then the check bounced. You need to know that was a low in the company. <laughs> You know, in those first years, I can seriously tell you that the amount of struggle was just amazing. I literally hawk the artwork off my walls to a guy who looked and acted an awful lot like Tony Soprano. <laughs> he was really, really scary. I eventually got them back and there was no broken bones, but it was getting close. Um, I actually then, at Christmas time, had to drive my brand new Jaguar XK8 convertible back to the dealership because I didn't have enough money to pay my staff. And you don't get to drive a car like that when you can't pay the people who believe in your dream. So when I tell you that teamwork makes the dream work, Look after your team. They are, they are the ones that are going to get you to where you want to go with your vision. Now, I was so tired of wishing and, you know, the, the reality is, is that money was standing in the way of my success. And it was so frustrating. I, you know, I, there's not one entrepreneur here today that I bet you I can say that doesn't know that feeling that if I only had the money, I could really then be everything that I wanted to be. If I could do anything with my life and money was no object, what would I do? A couple of years ago, I was asked that question. And I'll share, my answer was I want to give trees away to the farmers for free. Farmers, I've often said, have lovingly you know, put food on our tables, yet they're the ones who are starving. So. One of the things that I just thought that was absolutely crazy is because I c I'm a tree selling business. I can't afford to give away the trees for free. That's not my business model. But when you say money is no object, you start thinking outside the box of the possibilities and what's possible for your company. And before you know it, you're giving trees away to the farmers for free. You're helping stop the destruction of old growth forests. You are helping restore the lungs of Mother Earth. And everything you dreamed of starts to come true. And now standing before you, the carbon offset program was born as a result of somebody asking me that question. Now, I, I'm, I have the opportunity to stand before you and my mission is to offset the world's carbon footprint. And I get to talk to investors like you who want to be responsible and care about the environment by planting trees to offset your personal carbon footprint. Now I deliberately use the word investor. Can I see a show of hands? Who here has ever heard the statement, money doesn't grow on trees? What people don't realize is not only are trees good for the environment, but they're also good for your pocketbook. Now, I know we're all doing our part to clean up the environment. We ride, we compost, we recycle. But it's time for us to put our money where our hearts live. And our hearts live in our children, they live in our grandchildren, they live in our families, and they live in our powerful girlfriends. So when you start putting your money where your heart lives, everybody wins, including Mother Nature. Please, I ask you to come and take a look at our booth, and thank you very much.